All right, so we're going to do an example problem using definite integrals here. Uh, just as a quick note before we get started, if you're unsure about the difference between definite versus indefinite integrals, I've got a video explaining that in great detail uh, on this same playlist, Integrals for Calc 1, on my channel called Integrals Definite versus Indefinite, or something along those lines, Indefinite versus Definite. And that should explain everything to you. So just as a quick recap for this, what we're doing here for a definite integral. Definite integral is going to be the integral over some interval, a to b, of f of x dx, and it's going to give us area, some value of area. And that's going to tell us on a graph how much space in between point A and point B is being taken up, right? So that's all this is talking about as uh, we go into talking about definite integrals. So let's do a third degree polynomial function here, a pretty simple function. I want to find out what the definite integral, let's write that a little bit better, what the definite integral eh, of 1 plus 2x minus 4x cubed dx is over the interval 1 to 3. All right. So let's talk about a few things. There are three steps to taking definite integrals, and here are the steps that we're going to need to take. Step number one is we need to find the indefinite integral. Step number two, this is also the antiderivative, right? Step number one is. Number two, we need to substitute values. And last but not least, most importantly, in fact, number three, we need to find uh, the our answer from the upper limit of integration, subtract our answer from the lower limit of integration, and this is going to give us our integral. We're going to be done. So let's go ahead and start with step number one here, finding the antiderivative for this problem. So let's go ahead and break this up. Uh, we can do that. That'll make this easier. So let's break this up into the indefinite integral of 1 dx plus the indefinite integral of 2x dx plus the indefinite integral of 4x cubed dx. All right. That makes this a lot easier. Now, the indefinite integral of 1 is just x, right, because... Uh, the antiderivative is x, same thing, because x prime is always 1, so if we go backwards, we know that if you took the derivative of something and you got 1, well, it must have been x. So that's the logic we're using here. All right, so we get 1 for this part, plus 2x dx. Hmm, what are we going to do here? How are we going to get 2x? Well, let's think about another common thing we know. We know that this is just going to be x squared, because why? x squared prime is always 2x. So by that logic, if we because we you know, we pulled this power down, by that logic, if we take this uh, backwards and we say, what if you got 2x as the derivative, what were we taking the derivative of? We were taking the derivative of x squared. So we've got uh, 2x here, which is going to turn into x squared now that we've taken our antiderivative or our indefinite integral. So we've got 1 plus x squared and minus, I said plus up here, that was wrong. Let's go ahead and fix that. dx minus. Okay, that <laughs> looks pretty terrible. It's, oh man. Okay. dx minus, sorry, right, the indefinite integral of 4x cubed dx. 4x cubed, yeah, what are we going to do here? I can't can't think off the top of my head, right, of what's going to give us 4x cubed. Well, eh, maybe you could think right off the top of your head, and in fact, I think I can here, but let's go ahead and talk about another rule here just for purposes of illustrating things. Uh, if you are taking the, the uh, antiderivative of something to a power, if you have what is the indefinite integral of x to the nth power dx, well, this is always just going to be equal to, and this is a crazy important rule. You've probably seen this surface several times. You've seen my other videos. It's going to equal x to the n minus 1 over, not x, ugh, over n minus 1. That's it. That's all you're going to have. So what is n in this case? X is n is the power x is raised to. So let's go ahead and figure out what n is for this problem here n is going to be 3 because we're raising x to the third power, so we're going to get x to the 
n, oh, I say minus, did I say minus? I keep saying this over and over, it's plus, forgive me. x to the n plus 1, which is 3 plus 1, which is just 4. So we're going to get x to the 4th over 3 plus 1, which is 4. x to the 4th over 4, but we've got this coefficient sitting out front, so we're just going to have to pop this 4 right here in front of that x. So we get 4x to the 4th over 4. Now, you should probably be seeing here that we've got 4x to the 4th over 4. We can just kill this 4, right? We don't need that, so we can get rid of that and end up with just x to the 4th. So if we rewrite this, we've got x to the 4th, if we're going to put this in descending order, negative x to the 4th, I'm sorry, let's fix that. We have, because it's minus, we have negative x to the 4th plus x squared plus 1. All right, and... Uh, that may be over the watermark, so we'll, we'll write it up here. We've got negative x to the fourth plus x squared plus 1. All right, this is our antiderivative. Yeah. Antiderivative, great. So, erase that down here. All right, now, we finished our first step. What, is the, what, is, what do we do now? Well, let's go ahead and look. Our first step was finding the indefinite integral, or the uh, antiderivative. We did that. Now we need to substitute our values. All right. So what values are we substituting? Well, we're going to substitute our upper and our lower limits of integration. So our upper limit of integration is 3. Our lower limit of integration is 1. So let's go ahead and do that. Everywhere that we're, we'll do the upper limit first. Everywhere that we see an x, we're just going to put a, uh, a 3. So let's do this. Let's say our equation was x, negative x to the fourth. And I'm putting a uh, parenthesis here. This won't save you time, but this will prevent mistakes. I'm just putting parentheses instead of x. We can go fill this in in a second. Negative x to the fourth plus x squared plus x. I think I had said back here that it was plus 1. Uh, yeah, I just wrote 1. We knew it was x, so let me fix this. Kind of doing this in my head, winging it here. Plus x. All right, great. Now, all right, let's go ahead and fill in our values. So we said that the uh, upper limit of integration was 3, so let's go ahead and put 3 in here. And we'll see what this equals. Now let's do, our, do this for our lower limit of integration x to the fourth plus x squared plus x equals something. And we said that our lower limit of integration was just 1. So let's go ahead and plug in 1 here. All right, well, now this math is going to be the easiest, right? 1 to the fourth, that's just 1, plus 1 squared, which is just 1, plus 1, which is just 3, right? So we know that our lower limit of integration is just 3. Ah, but wait, I made a big mistake. This is not just 3, because look, what did I do? I ignored this negative. Negative 1 to the 4th is what we're looking at. So negative 1 to the 4th is negative 1, okay? So you have negative 1 plus 1 squared, which is 1 plus 1, so all of this together is just equal to 1. So, my apologies, our lower limit of integration is just 1. Okay, cool. So we've got that, now we've got to look at our upper limit of integration. What is negative 3 to the fourth power plus 3 squared plus 3? Well, this is going to be negative 69. So what we're going to end up getting is that our if we subtract these two, because this is our third thing, we're going to take our upper limit and subtract our lower limit. So we have negative 69 minus 1. Well, this is just going to be negative 70. So we took our upper limit and subtracted our lower limit. And let's specify that this is our upper limit here. Okay, cool. We got that taken care of. So we did our third step here. We substituted our values for our second step. And that was good. And then we uh, subtracted our upper limit, our lower limit from our upper limit. We got our 
indefinite, we got our definite integral in this, negative 70. So what's this look like on a graph really quickly? Let's do a really rough sketch. This is pretty much going to look about like this. Ooh, ugly. Wrong. Okay. About like that. And we're seeing how much space is to the x-axis. So in this little area right here, we're going to have... Let me make this a bit smaller. We're going to have negative 70 units squared of area. And this was from the original integral. From 1 to 3, what's the area of 1 plus 2x plus 4x cubed dx? So this was our original function. All right, so there we go. Quick recap. And we've done our third step. Quick recap, we had, uh, we wanted to take the definite integral to find how much area there was, so we used this little function right here, and uh, we broke it up into a couple of pieces. We got our antiderivative, or our indefinite integral, which was negative x to the fourth plus x squared plus x. Then we substituted our values in our upper and lower limits of integration, which were 3 and 1. We substituted those in, and we got negative 69 and 1. We subtracted those, and we got negative 70, and ta-da, we are done. So we, uh, we finished up with that much area on the graph, and we're, we're good to go.